Imagine that the local council has decided that they want to build a new factory. And there's obviously quite a lot of things to be taken into consideration before giving the project the green light. An environmental impact assessment provides decision makers with the information in order to consider the environmental impact of a project. It should inform the decision making process. So when is it needed? Well, for example, this factory that we've just discussed, but other projects might include building a new airport, dams, reservoirs, large housing projects, all sorts of big projects might require an environmental impact assessment. Quite a lot goes into one of these things and there are several stages in the process. First is screening, and this is there to determine whether or not an environmental impact assessment is needed at all. Next is scoping. Scoping is a way of deciding which impacts need to be assessed, and that's going to vary depending on the project and the location. A baseline study, this is a way of collecting data on the current state of the area, the current situation that we're in. For example, you can't predict the effects on local plant species if you don't know which plants are already present or in what sort of numbers. We might take into consideration physical factors such as the geology, the topography, biological things like animals and plant species present, socioeconomic factors, and also cultural factors. Now, obviously, you might argue that socioeconomic and cultural factors are not strictly the environment, but they are relevant to creating one of these reports, and they are often included. Next is the impact prediction. So if we do go ahead with this project, what are the possible consequences? And of course, leading on from that is the mitigation. If we've established what the possible negative consequences are, how could they be reduced or how could they be prevented? Also, are there any alternatives? So could we redesign the project slightly so that we could then remove these problems? And lastly, there should be adequate monitoring and and assessment. During and after the project, there should be monitoring of the environmental conditions which may be continuously changing as the project continues. And then, of course, assessment of the impacts of the project. The last thing is a non-technical summary. Basically, once this full full report, this full assessment has been produced, it needs to be presented in a way that um, non-specialists can understand. And so that's what a non-technical summary is for. There's a lot of criticisms of EIAs. They're obviously not perfect. Of course, the first one is sometimes the advice could be ignored. If um, perfect advice is given on how to reduce the impact, who's to say that that has to be followed? Next, the reports may be limited in scope, meaning all of the potential negative impacts may not have been identified in the first instance. Baseline studies may be incomplete, there might be a lack of available data, or basically the, the, the people who collected the information may not be as knowledgeable about the situation as they need to be. And there's often a lack of monitoring and review. So basically, once the project gets underway, the the negative consequences that develop throughout the project are not always investigated and not always addressed. Let's look at a possible exam question on this. You might get asked to describe the stages in creating an environmental impact assessment. As you can see, it's quite a big question. Seven marks is quite a lot. First of all, your baseline study. Say that it's required and say what it's required for. Next, obviously the impacts of the project must be understood and this must be presented clearly in the report. A non-technical summary must be provided and it's worth mentioning that the environmental impact assessment should inform the decision-making process. You can then go on to describe a little about the limitations. They're limited because the baseline study might not be complete, the full scope of the impacts may not have been investigated adequately and recommendations may be ignored throughout the project.